go ahead and introduce the players. You know, Kevin and I decided to uh, update the uh, the whole fist thing. Yeah. Like, it, it, since if you look at the logo, it's just a fist. So the only way that that's actually relevant is if, like, you only see the fist. So if we're going to do that, we have to, like, sit on the floor and just hold our hands. Okay. I'm down. Or just hide your body. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Or we just, like, right in, like, super zoom in on the camera. And we need, like, to to sharpen our nails, too, because yeah, I saw the nails Yeah, that thing has, like, claws, Like man. crazy. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and introduce the it's players. the gauntlets. It oh, is uh, so Complexity Heart. Nope, I denied you. Complexity Heart in the top right-hand corner as the blue Terran on Cloud Kingdom. Bottom left-hand corner, we have, of course, Sleep. Now, Heart, um, I, I think Heart is definitely considered <laughs> the, uh, the better... Kareen in this particular matchup. Uh, Hart's just shown fantastic skill throughout, oh god, all 2011 into 2012. Yep, had a couple really deep MLG runs and uh, played very, very well in the uh, in the first Korean gauntlet, which is why he is our first player up today. He's uh, he's still, you know, he's still the king. So, uh, we've got a hatch first out from Sleep, so very economic opening. Andre Evan playing 14 pool, 16 hatch in DBT. Yeah. You're a terrible person. It's pretty abusive. It's not abusive at all, actually. It is. It's not. It's abusive. You're hard countering one build, and no. that's CC first on uh, on the bottom of the ramp. Also, one rack expand on the low ground. One rack expand dies or wins against. It's a micro game at that point. It's not micro. It's like six lings against two marines. Two marines the and then four coming. SCVs. Yeah. Hey man, I like it. <laughs> I like it, and that makes it good. I, I wanna, I wanna go best of nine with you. I'll give I you am. odds too. I would lose. I'll, I'll give you so much. You gotta odds. go CC first every time. <laughs> 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 I am gonna go CC first every time. I'll, I'll give you odds though. I'll give you like three to one. Three to one. It, that's pretty nice, man. I'll think about it. All right. I'll think about it. Anyway, uh, fast gas coming out for a sleep right here. That's really interesting. Now, I had no clue that you and Rotterdam made fun of every single time I would talk about gas. We but we're going to go over that in a little bit. We don't make fun of uh, you every time. We just, we've just we always said that you are very serious about your gas time. I am very serious about <laughs> my gas time because it, it actually is the one thing that tells you the most about I everything in Circa. I do not disagree at all. Oh my god. Is that Marine attacking his own He was center? attacking He's his own command like mutiny. That was terrible. Meaning to attack the supply depot, but... Um, you know, StarCraft is a game of shroud and mystery sometimes. You have to really, really dig for information. Sometimes you can't. You can't get any of that information because your opponent denies you so much. But what's something easy to always look for is the gas. And it doesn't necessarily what your opponent is going to do. It tells you what your opponent is not able it to do. It tells you what's inside of his range exactly. of possibilities. So what is inside of Hart's range of possibilities, Andre, given that he's gone for this one racks fast expand and the d double gas up in the main? Okay, when you get one racks double expand, normally you see something like a Banshee follow-up. Uh, this, I love this. Hart actually opted to just take three SEVs off the gas, so you're not going to see Banshee. Normally, this is seen as, you know, really inefficient because it's like, I made the refiner, but now I'm not using this. However, I do like this because a lot of players aren't used to this style. Um, having that refinery there normally means, you know, there's a natural progression to go into Banshees, but now that he actually has, um, you know, a ton of minerals, he can actually get a really quick third and put on a ton of Hellion pressure with Marines, and I think that's really, really valuable in the early game stage. We do see that third command center going down, Andre. And right now, Sleep is the guy taking the very, very fast third base. That is an exceptionally quick third hatch from our Zerg player. And, you know, I, I think given what he's up against, is going to work out for him. There's not a whole lot that Hart can do to pressure this right, right away. I mean, no. these Hellions are going to be able to come out and be annoying. But the, the hatchery is going to be pretty safe, especially once the creek connects. Very interesting build, by the way, coming out from Hart. He's actually not getting additional Hellions. Now, this is like the cardinal rule in TVZ. It's either you get Hellions or you have Siege Tanks. Because you have to have one of the two on the field to actually deal with something like Zergling Baneling. Like Zergling Baneling off of 1-1 one, one or even 2-2 two, two I've seen. Rhett has, has done that uh, you know, here and there. But that is a really good build against just Bio. 
bio actually gets destroyed by that that build so you have to be very very careful while doing this heart is opting to just get two hellions and try to fake it he's trying to overdo the amount of units on the floor because obviously sleep is expecting mass hellions but uh he's gonna kind of surprise his opponent with this really really quick bio plus medivax most likely no he's actually this is weird this bonkers man not gonna lie well uh, disregarding what's happening over here in hard space, Sleep is doing some pretty standard stuff. He's getting double upgrades for his Zerglings, making lots of drones. I like that he hasn't overreacted. He's up to 50 drones already, which is where he has to be if he's going to keep up with a triple Oracle Terran. Correct. And he's continuing to power. Uh, only about eight Zerglings out on the map, but that's all he really needs to keep these Hellions at bay. So things are looking very nice for Sleep. It's a pretty comfortable position, very even game at this point. Layer has really just begun. It's kind of a late layer given what we're seeing. But uh, he's, he's going to probably tech very quickly to Hive as soon as that layer finishes. It's interesting that he got such a slow layer. A lot of players actually opt to get a really fast layer because of the whole Banshee threat, especially Cloak. So Cloak Banshee would have been very successful. That's why we actually see Spore Crawlers coming up right now. It is a little bit late, but still, I like that he's preparing for some sort of thing like that because he is expecting something. He just doesn't know what it is. He knows his opponent's been on two base forever. You know, Andre, you like to talk about gases. I love the way Sleep has taken his gases, one gas in his main, one gas in his natural, one gas in his third. Uh, and this is cute because if Hart scans, he's never going to see more than just one gas. It, it really keeps him guessing. Uh, so this is one little small thing that Zerg players can mix in to keep Terran in the dark. Absolutely right. Uh, for now, 2-2 two -two is about to be on the way for both of these players. I like how um, they've actually really, really prioritized their upgrades. That's something that's so important. Uh, what, what it does mean is Hart has pretty nice 2-2 two -two timing uh, since he's been able to keep up with the drones pretty nicely. Uh, you can see 55 to 70, 77 now. It's about but to be 80. Uh, but the mules, very well. yeah, the mules constitute, what is that, 13 and a half. So he's actually at... 70 and a half mineral or sentiment 70 and a half SCVs. He's still pretty fine With these guys still being very passive we're seeing Baneling speed go down and I'm wondering if sleep is planning some sort of plus two Baneling timing that might work out pretty well for him given uh, How late these siege tanks are first tank is just mm -hmm. now in production siege mode. Has it even begun yet? I would actually love no. to see something like that, by it the way. It hasn't. So a big Baneling bus would be very, very effective at this point in the game, even if even if Hart makes as many Siege Tanks as possible between now and the time plus two finishes. There is going to be a lot of Banelings, po potentially. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think we'll see that, but it's very, very possible. Actually, 32 more Zerglings out in the way. Oh, he's going to get a surround on the Siege Tank. Beautifully done. And this scout should actually tell him uh, everything. Oh. oh, my God. Almost getting into the main. Or at least the natural. Now over on the right-hand side, it looks like these Marines are going to be uh, probably squashed pretty soon. I know there's a ton of units coming in right now. The Banelings are not going to hit anything of use because all the units actually pick up. Uh, no anti-air just yet, but I don't really think Hart can do much with this. He's just going to try to do some good stuff with this medevac play, but there's lots of units out on the map for Sleep. And oh. oh, even losing a medevac. Nicely done there by Sleep who is moving very comfortably in the late game. We see the Spire going down. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen the Hive yet. Uh, maybe Sleep wants to play some sort of, uh, well, there's the there's the Infestation fit. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking for a second he might be thinking about like a later sort of Mutalisk switch, but it looks like, in fact, he will just go on up to Hive and uh, play some kind of standard late games work. Um, actually, I, w I would really implore Sleep, as you said before, like way before, to do some sort of Zergling Baneling attack. It's really hard to actually read that, but normally the, the rule of thumb is if you see so little amounts of, of siege tanks, just go for it. Yep. I mean, it, you're always going to get some sort of economic advantage from it. You have to make sure, though, that you have some sort of tech unit behind that. So, like ultras i know that's weird but ultras infestors something like that normally it is infestors but you need that power hitting ultra or that power hitting infestor that can be kind of self-sustainable and defensive while you know the counterattack is coming in directly after some sort of huge push yeah, we are going to see something here at the third base banelings will uh well, get a couple of supply depots yep. it looks like that's really all they're going to kill uh, heart's army is a bit out of position this is unfortunate that bunker's going to fall and heart having to scramble here Looks like he will lose a handful of SCVs to these Zerglings in total. Uh, six SCVs in the fall. 
big, big advantage now for Sleep. That dropship over on the left-hand side really cannot go into uh, the natural, and it's actually going to be cut off now by a single Corruptor. This Corruptor should be able to just force this uh, medevac out, obviously. And uh, a slew of Zerglings are going to try to get into the natural over here, but of course and they will be denied. Yeah, the wall is still up, but the third base is also still exposed. They will run up there, kill another SCV, and take out these supply depots. Heart is out on the map right now, but does... Oh, Bayman's all detonating on siege tanks. That's not what you want, but I don't think it's going to bother Sleep that much. He has a massive army, Andre, oh, yes. and he's setting up a huge surround. Yes, and Hard at this point, he needs to back up. His third base isn't even up anymore. All the supply depots actually died over there, and now now Sleep is coming in for a big surround, and the Zerglings are going to be enough bitter. Sleep is just wrecking Hart, the uh, the, the longest gauntlet holder. Yeah, yeah. Hart is our uh, winningest player thus far at the gauntlet. And it looks like he's, uh, he's going to be crushed here by Sleep. Now, Hart did tell me that he's uh, he's very sleepy still because he woke up not too long ago. So maybe his play not quite perfect, but Sleep's play has been exceptional. And at this point, there's really, really, uh, in my opinion, no way for Hart to get back into this. I mean, Sleep has a gigantic advantage, four base to pretty much a two base. I mean, even as Hart gets to uh, start mining from here, if you look at the main, that's mining out quite substantially. Natural is still pretty healthy. But what it says is he doesn't have a lot longer for three base economy. That means he needs to think about getting another base pretty soon. But by that time, Sleep has already transitioned into Hive Tech pretty comfortably. Yeah, uh, he hasn't made any Broodlords yet. He's instead uh, choosing to invest his gas into more Banelings. He has so many minerals, Andre. 4,000 minerals for our Zerg player. He could make 40 spine crawlers if he wanted and still be ahead. Or a lot of Zerglings. Or a lot of Zerglings. <laughs> Ultra's Cavern's also going to go down. We might, we, not, we might not see any Broodlords at all. I don't mind that. I mean, the Corruptors are still good. It forces some Vikings out because still you have to prepare against Broodlords. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, it, it will also protect against medevac drops. Obviously, you're able to clean them up a lot better. Um, I mean, sleep is so gas starved, and I'm not really. Oh, it's his here's fourth why. base. He He's not mining. His gas is at the fourth. I make this mistake all the time. It's actually a really painful mistake to make. Uh, you really need that uh, that seventh and eighth gas to, to sustain yourself. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Gas timings, Andre. Gas timings, bro. If it was me playing, I would not forget about my gas timings. Although I would have probably. 20% of the army that sleep does. <laughs> Hart's going to make one final push, and it's going to be a big one. 160 supply bearing down on that fourth expansion where Hart or Sleep has finally noticed that he wasn't mining gas. Uh, tanks are getting very close. Greater Spire actually wasn't even morphed, so maybe that's why we never saw the Broodlords. We are just going to see an engagement, though. Sleep's going to come crashing in from multiple angles and will make short work of Hart's army. And there it is. Good game. Sleep dethrones the king and is our first winner here during our second day of Korean gauntlet action. Yep. Hart stopped in his track, but $75 will be picked up by, of course, Sleep, who uh, was actually a contender last time around, did not get as far as he did this time around. But uh, remember, you need two wins to actually qualify for the gauntlet at the end where all these players will be put into a pool. You guys can vote for your favorite people to actually be chosen for the top four. The top four will go on to, uh, to obviously compete for $1,000 and the Covenant Cup. Right now, Sleep holds that gauntlet. Folks, we're going to take a very short break. And when we return... What are you doing? I, I can see your whole body. Really? Oh. Oh, God. He's, you're on the wrong camera, Elliot. <laughs> camera one. We can still see you. There's, okay, there. On the gauntlet. <laughs> oh my we're done gosh. yet? We're, done, we're not commercial we're, yet? We're going to commercial. We're going to commercial. <laughs> 